23 new day and welcome back thank you very much let me say a very big happy birthday to you festus tete uh joanna dabraka your brother to james here at tv3 dj biggie blaze your birthday today happy birthday let's take a look quickly at the headlines the daily graphic starts us off it talks about president akufado addressing deba and sefi also president uh, presents vehicle to regional coordinating council the js students to wear new Uniforms from 2019 to 2020 academic year. Bill on political vigilantism laid in parliament. Swale murder suspect arrested attempts bribing police with 200,000. And primary schools get new curriculum. KG uh, subjects reduced from 7 to 4. Those are the front page stories of the Daily Graphic. The Daily Guide this morning reports that new JHS uniforms outdoored. Police chase eight key suspects. New regions not for votes, according to President Kufado, and a nurse boy killer nabbed. Vigilantism bill lands in Parliament. The Finder newspaper. Massive overhaul. GES unveils comprehensive curriculum changes, but new JHS uh, school uniform generates uproar. Vigilantism bill to be passed under certificate of urgency and Ghanaian company targets affordable medicine for every African. Works begin on Sefuoso Juaboso Roads warehouse at Bia. The Ghanaian Times. GES outdoors new uniform for JES students from next academic year. Vigilantism bill laid before parliament. President Katsord inspects projects in Western North Region and police grab suspected assassin in the murder of the investigative journalist Ahmed Swale and attempts to bribe police with 20,000. Uh, I will deliver on my promises, President, tells the folks in Sifrio. So the BNFT this morning says Enterprise Boss Bags NIC's recapitalization move says it will consolidate insurance sector. Construction sector thirst for regulation and remove luxury tax. It hampers our growth. Car rental players say so. And the Catholic standard is our final one for this morning. It says church needs gifts. Enthusiasm of young people says Pope Francis in new apostolic exhortation as he goes to kiss the feet of two warring factions to tell them to stop fighting. My guest this morning, uh, Dr. Clement Apake, is the member of parliament for Bursa South. Doc, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. Good to see you. And let me say good morning to the people of Bursa South. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and Elvis Bota is the deputy national organizer of the MPP. Elvis, good morning, welcome. Good morning. How are you Great going? You, you, I nice thought you were going to teach me how to greet your people as well. <laughs> and I'm diary. certainly going to do that. <laughs> uh, Bright will tell you it's a norm for me. Okay. I always say answer to the good people of Nadolu Kelio constituency okay. and the entire Upper West people and of course the entire MPP fraternity. Right. So in Dagari we say Ansuma and the response is AC. Ansuma. Yeah, he he has, has, so, so look, he so has a lot of experience yes. there so he understands yeah. the language. I, 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 I spent my formative years in the Upper West. So. I see. <laughs> Interesting. Let's, let's begin this conversation and Doc, I, I know you have always expressed, we'll get to the GES issues, but I know you've always expressed interest in the Rosewood uh, issues. Yesterday we had an extensive conversation and by that let me say that yesterday we mentioned that it was the processing plant was actually in the Mole National Park. That's that's not entirely correct. Um, we understand that it's about 15 miles away towards Damongo. That's where it is. But the Mole National Park itself has a few challenges. So apologies to our friends at the Mole National Park. The processing plant is not in the heart of the Mole National Park. It's around Damongo. But the issues, you know, still run around. Doc, the, the, there were recommendations from Parliament that, you know, this should end. And the minister was to take the charge and the lead to enforce these recommendations. From where you sit, and with your interest, and in Parliament, do you see anything happening? Well, the short answer is no. Uh, and I think it is very worrisome. Um, that recommendation came as a result of a statement I made on the floor of Parliament mm. uh, in uh, 2017, drawing attention to the negative effects of okay. uh, the illegal harvesting and export of uh, rosewood. Right. For the highly prized timber species okay. across, across the globe. Right. Uh, but uh, given where we come from mm -hmm. and the nature of climate change, uh, the illegal harvesting uh, clearly was beginning to have very dire consequences. So on the basis of that uh, statement, the speaker then referred it to the Committee on Lands and Forestry. 
uh, took some time, mm -hmm. but eventually the committee went to do um, a field, or, uh, field visit, assess the situation, mm -hmm. uh, met with uh, entities from the Forestry Commission and the okay. Ministry, and then wrote a report which was adopted by, okay. by the House. Uh, in that report, a lot of far-reaching recommendations were made. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was the outright uh, refusal or if you like the cancellation okay. of permits because it is that component of permits to salvage okay. that serve, serves as a conduit right. for the illegal activity right. uh, to continue. Exactly. Uh, exactly the case in the latest uh, Exactly. So they say that they have received a permit to salvage and, and the truth is that there is nothing to salvage. Right. The salvage permit can only be uh, awarded to a contractor or potential beneficiary mm. if the trees are in the catchment area of a major development, okay. in this case road construction, or the establishment of a new right. settlement. Facility. Or if uh, indeed the, 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 the trees are already, or the locks are already on the forest floor. Okay. But in most of the cases that we know, none of this is happening. These, are, yet, these are good trees exactly, where we cut. And yet we keep seeing the permits being given mm. and wood being uh, carted and, and exported out of out of the country. Okay. So I am a bit disappointed, to say the least, because even after my work, others have continued. A sister station of yours did a documentary, mm. uh, which was very well publicized. Right. The minister then came out after even denying mm. that there were no instances where rosewood was being harvested mm. as of this year. When we have evidence to the contrary, then came out to uh, make another pronouncement reinforcing the ban okay. and outlining what was to be done. But since then, I have not seen any communique. Mm. I have not had any directives to the security agencies or, you know, those who are supposed to ensure right. that this illegal activity stops. Are, I've we, not are, we, are we fighting a lost battle? Well, it is a lot like the Galam say, to be honest with you. And I have said that if we are serious about it, then we need to look at putting in place a tax force to go after this. But, but ever since Parliament put together the recommendations and charged the minister to deal with it, and they gave their commitment to deal with it. If they are not doing it, Parliament should... Uh, exa exactly so. And, say, and I, I intend... We I gave intend, you recommendations. I intend, you are not doing it. I deal intend, with it. I intend to reactivate that and bring that to the attention of the Speaker. Because if this is to be done, it should be done publicly in a way that will let all those who are responsible mm. to ensure that the process is curtailed and doesn't continue are up and doing. Because to have those would mm. come from my constituency of Butsa South from a place like Bachongsa mm -hmm. or Kadeng Chansa, all the way to the port to be exported. Right. When it is supposed to be an illegal product. Mm -hmm. In itself, it's an indictment on the entire chain. Yeah. <laughs> from the most basic uh, 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 avenues, or if you like, agencies to deal with this issue, okay. all the way to the customs at the port. Mm. Because if the product is illegal to procure, then logically, it should be illegal to export. I count on you to raise this in Parliament again. Especially I since but I need the help of one. the media. We, we will push, but you push as well. so that uh, it, It's not for the lack of effort. Let, let's, start, let's start. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> let's start off. Yesterday, uh, there was a new announcement, a curriculum change uh, for uh, kindergarten up to primary school and a uniform change for JHS. It's caused a lot of national debate. And the key question people are asking is that, well, we're changing the curriculum. Will that necessarily improve quality and access? Elvis. Yeah, so before I have my take on this particular subject, it is important to comment briefly on these issues of roads. We all know that it is a major economic plant, mm. and uh, giving the opportunity, Ghana itself can have a formidable framework that allows us to bridle, mm. you know, the conservation and subsequent utilization of same right. to the benefit of you know our own economic uh, chances mm. in fact the worrying phenomenon like most others which have run through successive you know governments mm. have got to do with perennial issue of you know afforestation of you know woods and trees mm. of all categories be they cash crops be they of economic value of some other or sometimes out of ignorance but mm -hmm. it is left upon state institutions, relevant state bodies, right. to take it up. So, of course, we all witnessed the documentary on the issue, and uh, I am very much versed with the Damango, Larbanga, Sola, area, the entire savannah zone where I particularly school. Okay. And, and I can tell you that, yes, of course, these issues 
uh, have been happening, not to the years of 2004 to 2007, when I was resident in Demongo, these activities were going on. Right. That is not to give justification to, to that worrying pandemic. But I want to give assurance that government is on its toes. The relevant state is sometimes not the seen bureaucracy. The minister acting. That's yes. the problem. Is, the minister you know, needs it is, to it act. Is not, it is not all the time you see the actions immediately out there. Well, but because if the we trees live, are being we live, cut. We live in a bureaucratic mm. system. You, he understands as a member of parliament what the bureaucracy in the system is. So an important factor is that parliament have got what it takes, the teeth to bite on okay. this particular matter. So if we think that there are delays in the implementation of whatever recommendations that were made, it is only important that the minister be re-invited or be given some form of a reminder okay. so that there can be some right. activation of the momentum in that regard right. so that we can save Thank you. The, the, Let's the talk situation. about new school uniforms uh, and new curriculum. School uniforms uh, and will it necessarily, the change in the curriculum, for example, for kindergarten and from primary schools, uh, is being changed from seven to four? four. Will it necessarily improve quality and access? Yes, absolutely. I do not think that uh, when it comes to the fundamental issue of educational reforms, uh, someone just left woke up uh, and because the person is in government and have got the power and political will to mm -hmm. be able to act, you know, proceed in, in taking any decision without adequate technical review okay. and analysis of the situation. When you have a system running, it is only important that intermittently you make a critical review, a critical consideration, and where needs be a mm -hmm. constructive critique of you know, the shortfalls of that particular system. Once you are able to run this analysis and you know the shortfall mechanisms mm -hmm. or the shortfall gaps, you are able to come in place with policy directions, the necessary reforms that will be able to bridge these kind of gaps. Mm -hmm. So if you realize, so for example, the current administration thinks that, okay, upon an assessment mm -hmm. of our educational system, especially mm -hmm. at the basic level, mm -hmm. there are needs for some reforms, right. one of whom have got to do with uh, an assessment of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And this was not a whimsical mm -hmm. opinion of government. It was based on regular analysis of the situation, some effects on the quality thereon, and the need to have, for example, make this reduction of subjects. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you have your three-year-old, four-year-old in KG mm -hmm. reading seven subjects. Over the period, this is what we have always seen, and this is what we've all been through. And it has always not been too helpful. By the time they get to P1, there is usually a repetition of virtually every single subject mm. taught at that level. So, and you see, what then happens is that the basic psychological requirements mm. needed for good foundations at that level are not strong enough, you know, to give a boost to further learning. So you find a kid in primary one who still have issues with basic numeracy. Mm. You have a kid in primary one who still have issues with putting letters together to pronounce a two-letter word. Mm. So it is the thinking of government mm. in consultation with necessary stakeholders of the Ghana Education Service and the National Curriculum and the Assessment Review Committee. Mm. Okay, I think that body is responsible right. for these things, yeah. you know, to reconsider it. So a reduction from seven to four is to narrow the curriculum down to pragmatic relevant subjects that are required foundationally to give a rapid takeoff of primary education. And that's the only time we can the, be The proud. question of quality, I mean, this, that's a fair yes. point, but the question of quality and access, you find schools, and we have had a lot, lot of reports where there are schools without teachers, there are schools with teachers without the relevant books to teach, yes. there are schools without classrooms, there are schools without, you know, so many other factors come to play. By the mere change of the curriculum, will it resolve these things or are we doing them hand in hand? What, what's the plan? Yeah, if you understand the current you know, structural reforms, this particular regime, the regime of His Excellency the President, wants to imbibe, we agree that primary education is most fundamental to the overall educational objectives of this mm -hmm. country. Uh, when you are dealing with a policy direction to make sure that the system works, okay. you do so cautious of the primary and secondary constraints that are likely to undermine the progress of whatever. In this case, what did you, so what did in you this do? Case, mm -hmm. It is only fair for anybody to think that, yes, we have lack of teachers, we have lack of 
not lack of teachers, adequate. We have inadequacy of our teachers, mm -hmm. looking at teacher-people ratio. We have inadequacy of educational materials. Those are some of the constraints. And they have always been with us anyway, considering the ever-growing population, okay, relative to the number of institutions and the number of trained teachers mm -hmm. chained out. But that is... Those are things we cannot do without. They will always be there. What we must do is to strive towards improving the situation. So, yes, this government has taken it up. And uh, one of our fundamental issues is to make sure that we improve on teacher enrollment. How? One I want to know what the to plan make sure is. One of the issues is to make sure. Well, it, it goes first of all to you know, adequate training of the teachers themselves and equipping them with adequate skills. The, the and you recall that just... Yes, who you are, recall who that just last year, a few, a few interventions, such as the Lancet Sheet exam, is to enhance quality of delivery. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you recall that our teacher training colleges, or college of colleges of education, have now been given a full tertiary status. That is to one improve enrollment, okay. and two to be able to make sure that look, uh, they run not just only the diploma but also the degree programs, so that they, before teachers come out to handle children mm -hmm. at this level. Okay, they are equipped with adequate technical expertise to do so. Okay. That is what touches on, on the quality. And right. If you go to other countries, you realize that the best teachers are the basic level. Right. And so these are very targeted reforms under this administration that His Excellency is very passionate about. Okay. And we believe that will trigger the quality effect. We Doc, I, I had a meeting with the uh, Ministry of Health at the time they were talking about exclusive breastfeeding mm -hmm. and secondary breastfeeding. And they were talking about the fact that the brains develop at this stage, you need a right level of nutrition and stimulation and engagement to make them go. Then I raised a question about the fact that in most of our kindergartens, and especially in the primary schools, in the private schools, you find, not in every case, you find school dropouts, you find people who don't have that pedagogical approach and the training, people who don't know anything about child psychology. You know, somebody sets up a, a, a nursery school, and you go there, all they do is sing and dance, eat and sleep. They clean their face for them and then they go. I'd be worried about it. Now we're told of a curriculum change, reducing it from seven to four. Will it again, I'm asking, improve quality and access? Because that's the fundamental thing. You are an academic. Talk to me. Well, first of all, let me say that we all agree that uh, education uh, is important. Mm -hmm. It is the reason why. Uh, the Constitution itself, you know, speaks about it and, and says that uh, as much as possible within the constraints of our resources, mm. it should be available to every citizen of school going age right. and, you know, free of charge, mm. so to speak. Um, we are all here by virtue of having the opportunity to be educated. I believe there are several other Ghanaians mm. who perhaps uh, if they had the same opportunities, would have done much better than us. But for one reason or the other, mm. they never got the, the opportunity. But, but to the crust of, of, your, of your matter, okay. it's not just about curriculum reviews and, and reforms. Mm. If you review the curriculum and you, and you reform the system, and yet the basics that you need to enhance teaching and learning are not available, then truly, what is the point of the exercise? What, what are the basics here? Well, as you said, yeah. one basic need to ensure effective teaching and learning is the availability of the structures themselves. Right. You know, you must be able to put up a structure to serve as a school block, mm. whereupon the, the kids can go to, to be tutored by an instructor or a teacher right. properly trained. Okay. And he saw an area of expertise. And in, in the preamble that you gave, you were alluding to the fact that there are instances where the persons that are even recruited to teach mm. don't have the requisite expertise to dispense the responsibilities that they have been engaged to dispense. Mm. And, and so, yes, we need the structures, the fiscal structures, so that teaching and learning can go on. But once you have the fiscal structures, you need the human resource. Okay. That is where the teachers come in. Yes, need curriculum. Well and good. Now we are being told that there's going to be uh, national testing Mm -hmm. at uh, primary two, primary four, primary six. Right. But who are those who are going to prepare them? You need teachers. There are many parts of this country, including my constituency, where there are schools indeed without teachers. Right. And it's not because of the, abs the absence of teachers in the system, mm -hmm. but the way it is, the way our system has functioned, mm -hmm. the rural areas and rural constituencies like mine mm -hmm. 
uh, tend not to have the requisite amenities and the proper enticements are not there mm. to attract and retain the teachers that we all would wish are teaching. I would even why, why, argue. Why are we allowed this situation to persist? I mean, well, if those, you know what and that is that is why we why are, are we talking. That is why we are talking about. It is not just a curriculum reform right. that is going to do the magic, but we must look at the basics that will be needed to ensure that these reforms really yield the type of benefit that uh, they are anticipated mm. to yield. So, for example, in my constituency, for example, mm. if you, we can introduce these reforms, but I can guarantee you that it's not going to make much of a change mm. because there are challenges of the availability of, of, uh, 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 of, of reading mm. and learning material. Mm. There are challenges with even school blocks mm. where we have them Many of them don't even have the requisite furniture. Mm. There are many schools that yet don't have teachers. So, yes, these reforms are supposed to be national. Mm. But I can tell you off the bat that when it comes into effect and the first testing is going to be done, mm. don't be surprised that communities like mine and, and constituencies like mine the students certainly will not be at par how, how do with, we... their, with their colleagues in places like, you know, uh, Adenta mm -hmm. or if you like Kwadasu in Kumasi. So the fact is that there are still enormous challenges that must be addressed Doc, how in do we, tandem. How do we all in help tandem to solve, with what is going on? How do we all help to solve the problem from where we are? I mean, the media will talk about it, shine light on what the deficiencies are. You are a member of parliament, you are an organizer of a, a political party in government. How do we all help to make the situation better? First of all, we have to prioritize. And, and prioritizing means that we must look at the things that are most pressing and most uh, foundational. Mm. And then we build on that. Okay. Certainly, the availability of teachers qualified and trained to teach at the kindergarten level, mm. at the primary level, at the secondary school level. Okay. These are supposed to be specialized. And right. that is one of the reasons why, at our time, we began the processes of elevating the teacher mm. uh, training institutions to okay. the degree Award. Mm. In fact, we even had plans of designating okay. specific teacher training colleges to specialize, mm. to specialize in the training of teachers for the different levels okay. of the educational ladder. I mean, these are documents that I there. I saw them because you remember I was yeah. in the in the in the heart of uh, the, the the system of governance mm. at our time. Right. You know. So the processes began. I can argue that to elevate the teacher training colleges and the uh, former polytechnics to where they are mm -hmm. began during this regime. So prioritization these are, these are facts. Is, is a key. Yeah, but we always say that governance is a continuum. Yeah. And if you listen to my submission, I have not challenged or criticized the curriculum review. You haven't. What I am saying is that there are other a lot more needs to be right. done mm -hmm. that should capture our attention. Okay. Train more teachers, get more specialized teachers, right. build school blocks in the communities that lack them, okay. ensure that they have the requisite uh, 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 teaching and learning material, right. motivate the teachers okay. to, to settle in the rural communities. Mm. And that is how we are going okay. to ensure that uh, a, a, a review uh, like this uh, uh, becomes beneficial uh, 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 to the good people of Ghana. Uh, uh, and it doesn't just become uh, a paper review. Period. Okay, Elvis, you, you have a bite yeah, of it. But yeah. tie that in uh, with also, because we need to take a break shortly, uh, tie that in with the change of uniform as well. And on the backdrop of the fact that we had a, a policy to do free uniforms in 2009, which subsequently was scrapped. Now, this change of new school uniform with the psychological makeup that the students need to see uh, the, the scroll or the certificate, they need to see the graduate hat and the national flag to inspire them to aspire for greatness, will be borne, the cost will be borne by the parents who themselves are already burdened and who we say we are providing free education for. Tie that in with, with what you have to say and tell me if that also, the beautification of, of the students will, for example, solve the problem of absenteeism. And you know that in certain communities, children don't go to school because they don't have uniforms basically to wear because they can't afford them.
Uh, so to start with on a, a very lighter note, an mm -hmm. interesting observation I've been making since yesterday, yeah. uh, you know, makes me feel confident of the policy direction of His Excellency uh, President Nana Kufado to okay. the extent that very prominent, intelligent, well-respected NDC communicators seem to, you know, fall in sync with most of our things. Yesterday I was with Honorable Inusa Fuseni. We're talking about interchanges in the north, and I said, oh, even at our time, we were to do it. Good. Uh, today, it is interesting to also hear that even at their time, they also had some plans in place in respect of educational reforms. That, that, that suggests to me that there is that's some form national of development. Yeah, but yes, is a continuing national development. But what I said that, that is, is not the, contestable. That you know, talks about the continuity so, of government. So, so it, yes, it, tells, it gives me the confidence that the surprising thing is that they had always wanted to do exactly what we are doing. And so that is you are building on it. Talking about. We started so moving the training <laughs> colleges <laughs> well, and then sometimes universities. So, I mean, come to. No, no, no. But I admit it. It is not surprising. We started that. You don't want to admit it. I do not contest that. I admit But I'm saying it is good to realize. That exactly. anything good by that done now yeah. by this administration yeah. appears to be something the NDC was to do. So it tells us we that were the doing. country is in, in, okay. in good yes, Elvis is trying to play smart. No, I'm not playing smart. You are playing smart. You must have to that we started the processes so okay. now, to, to elevate the training so because, look, and the technical analysis. If he has lots of time, let me be quick on the substantive on the table. So we are talking about you know issues that are fundamentally uh, on policy. Right. Uh, one thing we must know and understand is that at no point in time, be it in the social or corporate sector, there is nothing like policy perfection. Right. If you want to say because of bottleneck A, bottleneck B, bottleneck C, uh, you will have to draft a policy in face, a, a robust one such as education. Mm -hmm. Okay, let us deal with infrastructure, let us deal with teacher quality because we talk of... No. Mm -hmm. They must move simultaneously. So I think that... Uh, Yes, curriculum development is great, but uh, moving forward, infrastructure, I know this government is doing well. Get Fund has had some money. Uh, GES to, will also receive a fair share of a number of structures nationwide. Some are already going on, mm. okay, if you, especially in my constituency and most of the five northern regions now, a lot of school blocks are coming up under this administration. Well, you I'm give sure us that, assurance. Yeah, yeah, in in respond so, quickly so to, to the issue now, of talking uh, about the, the school uniforms, yes, it is, it's a great, whether it will solve the it's a great question of absenteeism and what cost the parents have to bear if they are ready and all of that. Talk to me. Uh, yes, so in talking about the, the uniform, first of all, I think kudos to government, kudos to the GES. It is important for us to, like I said, a review of situations intermittently mm. and the adoption of best practices mm. is, is key. You see, at the very heart of our primary education lies the right psychology of the child to see education as a motivating factor, to see the school as a stimulating environment to be. And so one of the key things, look, this tea and bread and most of these uniforms in the system mm. are what we all use. In fact, in the case of some of the kids now, their parents used that. Okay. okay, I'm not saying there's anything particularly, you know, wrong with it. It's a beautiful thing. But if we are making a change of uniforms, first of all, it is not the first time in our history that uniforms are being changed. Growing up at some point, I noticed in the junior high schools, and then, I mean, Jusek then, they were using blue light blue and khaki down. Right. I didn't get to use that. Okay. I used tea and bread. Right. I knew people who used other uniforms, depending on as to whether you fell under the Islamic education unit, the right. Catholic education Anglican unit, or the mainstream, you know. Methodist, yeah. So these things, changes of uniforms comes and goes. And so if it has come this time, there's nothing wrong with it. But importantly, we think that given the, you know, the scholarly picture of the situation and color variation between Primary school in GSS is key to the psychological advantage of the child because the fact, okay, oh, I admire the uniform worn at the GSS. Once I leave primary school, so this is the next uniform I'm going to be wearing. Okay. What it means is that the child is psychologically prepared to want to advance, mm. to get there, to also dress like the big brother or the big sister. 
and that is one way of boosting the psychology. That, that's not a doubt. Let's talk about yeah. whether so I solve the, the problem then, of absenteeism. No, 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 and no, no, the no, no, no. Yes, because parents. if that environment is created, mm. and I'm not saying it will give a holistic solution to the issue of absenteeism, mm. but if that you know stimulating environment within the learning gap is is being created, the child will want to go. But to school. my question of absenteeism is related to the and fact that sometimes you find. Uh, Children wearing patched uniforms. Sometimes they don't even have it so at all. So you see, because one thing, one thing we it. must, and so they they don't attend classes. Sometimes, and these are it's, sometimes it's not out. also the issue of affordability. One in talking about a critical issue of education, let us not narrow it down to a sole responsibility of government. Mm. It is also one that the parent has a crucial role to play, psychicking your child disciplining your child, making sure your child is pushed to go to school, mm. and striving to provide basic things. It's not everything we can give Why, why was the free children. school uniform uh, initiative scrapped the, the, in 2000? I was, I was well, when you are school. talking about these issues, you've got to consider issues of cost, okay. actually on a yearly basis. Mm. Okay, Actually on a yearly basis. Free SHS is good. Free uniforms is equally good if government can continuously do that. Uh, by dint of implementing the free universal basic education FQ, right. uh, I'm not saying that government must do everything. Yes, government should intervene when we have to intervene. But you as the parent, mm -hmm. what is your role in your world going to school? A uniform? Parents should be able to also rise up to some responsibility mm -hmm. in respect of where they want their children to go. Okay. And sometimes, how serious you the parent is will give that motivation to their child, irrespective of your ability or inability or incapacitation, mm -hmm. to provide everything. At some point, we went to school without wearing any sandals, yeah. barefooted. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure my uncle will attest to that. But it did not stop us. Are you getting? I'm not saying that should be the situation. But parents themselves should, in this 21st century, rise up to the occasion. That, does the, so does government does have entirely. plans to cushion uh, parents in, absolutely in, we think that the, the fundamental element. issues have got to do with infrastructure teacher motivation okay and you realize that some uh, 50 million dollars has been put into teacher motivation mm -hmm. earlier this year so infrastructure teacher motivation then government parent uh, responsibility towards education is the right okay approach. Doc, take a minute by yeah and we'll very, take a break. very quickly uh, I think we can all agree that uh, the introduction of a new uniform, mm. while it may boost morale, is not a panacea to the resolution of the challenges that uh, we face. Uh, but be as it may, um, it is not unusual for uniforms to be changed now and then. Some have sought to question and query mm. uh, the justification. Supposedly, it's supposed to be uh, psychological to serve as, uh, if you like, as a benchmark to indicate the fact that the kids in the junior high school mm -hmm. uh, are about to enter senior high school mm -hmm. and therefore they are separate from those in the lower primary which is uh, from class one mm -hmm. to class six but you see we we need to be very careful how we play this up boosting morale mm -hmm. of of mm -hmm. the junior high school students uh, letting them feel already that they are in lower secondary right. Is positive, but it can also have a negative effect. Right. They could then start behaving, mm. actually, as though they are already in, se in secondary school. Mm. And, and that in itself could present some challenges. But, but doesn't the positives outweigh the negatives? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it is bad, but I'm saying that we need to be careful as well. Because sometimes the intention for introducing change may not be reflected in how the beneficiaries of that change mm. acted out. Okay. So th this is just uh, an issue that I think yeah, just a we, quick should, one. we should keep. We, we need to take no, a break. No, we I'm not keep, uh, Just a quick one in 30 seconds. This, I mean, what you were talking about free uniforms. Free uniforms, It's yeah. still, it's not completely scrapped. I must okay. it's instructive to let viewers understand okay. that. It is in place, but only limited in specific rural, okay. rural Ghana. Right. You know. Thank you very much. Teacher motivation is good. That is why we implemented the comeback of the other ones. They scrapped it. <laughs> I'm not sure they <laughs> will take a break at this <laughs> point. <laughs> When we return, we will get into regularly. some more issues here. But remember that at 9 a.m. this morning, we're talking Fix Ashale Boche Roads on 3FM 92.7. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.
Ah, madam, I did that of one man. Baby, say, let me date you soon. Ah, oh, 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 Call Vodafone or any network and get 10 megabytes of free data every minute you talk. Dial 5050 to subscribe. Hey, I'm a switch up of Vodafone in me. If you like it, partisan, what is seen as partisan vigilantism. Mm. It is important for us to know that if we are legislating and parliament is the one legislation, under that ambit of law, we have what it takes okay. to define what constitutes or what the definition should encapsulate in terms of what we mean by vigilantism. Okay. So that definition is, is, is purely ours to do in the eye of the law. Okay. And what parliament defines and subsequently if that is approved becomes the operational parameters within which you, you are making approved. a proposal so I, I, to I, parliament I, in the form yes. of a bill and a certificate of agency. agency and he says that proposition in itself is misfiring and i'm saying it is not what the makes premise, it misfiring. The, the premise because of the it is wrong it is wrong for the professor or anybody to think that the fact that uh the definition okay or what is explained i'm sure that parliament may have received a memorandum of the bill that is what okay. usually happens in parliamentary right. proceedings Absolutely. and in there in there that memorandum will contain what we define or what we seek to define in the eye of the law as vigilantism okay so it must not necessarily be in consonance with mainstream academic definitions such as the professor wants okay. us to believe the, the, so i disagree entirely with him mm -hmm. that in enacting a law the legislative procedures goes beyond the mere academic interpretation of issues. Okay. But even within the brackets of academia, that is contestable. Because like I said, in social, he may have his definition, I may have my definition, depending on the perspective we are looking at it from. Mm -hmm. But that does not change the underpinnings mm -hmm. of the canker of sin. The, and that the, is why I disagree with The two major political parties with the National Peace Council are currently at the table discussing how to disband these groups. They are finding a solution to it. Then we have a bill. How do we reconcile the two? Are we not heading ourselves? No, we, we're not heading ourselves. Too, too many meat does not spoil soup. From where did my uncle and I come from, mm -hmm. we, it is said that too much meat does not at all destroy the taste of the soup. Look, but it is important for us to realize that sensitive as the issue is, mm -hmm. these activities of political vigilantism are not at all times at the instruction of the political party. People are so enthusiastic about political, their political leanings to the extent that good conscience eludes them sometimes. So the fact that we may have the two political parties going into a dialogue, which the NPP is very much passionate about, because at the instruction of the president, we don't want to turn around to embarrass him in the public conduct of our life. Mm. Okay, so you realize that we're very instrumental in inviting our brothers from the other divide so that we can have some amicable understanding. But beyond that, if you do not legislate on the matter, mm. there lies the propensity that one party or the other may play political gimmicks with it and behind some hypocritical move, mm. still perpetrate it in a certain way. Mm. Especially at a time where leaked tapes and uh, all manner of alleged voices mm. are pointing to suspicious moves in that regard. Mm. It is important to legislate, to criminalize the conduct. Okay. So much so that even if you come and profess to the public that I am ending vigilantism mm. and turn around to act in the opposite, the law will be there to stretch its long arms okay. on you. Thank and you. to conclude those those who may even be doing so without the express authorization right. of political parties, the law will be the one that will cater for them. So for me, I think that to legislate on this matter is key. What we should be looking at fundamentally is to make sure that long after the legislation is brought, mm. the particular entity or the enforceable entities okay, are given the teeth to bite without interferences right. from this important Thank you very much. But Doc, very take well. a bite on this. So yes. the professor the, the, says the, we are misfiring. The, the parties are at the table. Question is, do we need this law? Uh, because some have argued that we already have all the laws already. So why do well, we? Well, I, I think that the professor has a has a point mm -hmm. uh, because I have also worried about 
the meaning of the word vigilantism mm. and uh, how we uh, presented it. Uh, but be as it may, this is uh, one of the reasons why uh, our side of the house, we felt that for such an important bill, it was necessary okay. to bring in stakeholders mm -hmm. for them to also voice out their concerns and make an input. Okay. Uh, and I think that uh, it is the reason why what government sought to do through mm -hmm. the Attorney General yesterday to get us to pass it and uh, the usual st certificate of emergency, which could have happened yesterday, okay. uh, we argued and, and the, the other side agreed that it, it is only fair and important that we give room okay. for other stakeholders in, in the area of uh, peace building mm -hmm. and, and, and safeguarding peace, like the Peace Council, right. security uh, experts, the political parties, civil society groups, are also able to, to make an input. We have even argued that we need to see the Iowa West Wagon uh, and the Short Commission report. report right. whether, whether we like it or not, it has a relationship with what government wants us to do. Right. And we believe very strongly that that would help inform mm -hmm. how we can tweak this. Okay. Uh, because this is just a proposal. This doesn't mean that when it goes through the mail, it is going to come out the way it is. Right. But we need to be properly informed we must be given all the requisite information yeah, and we have argued that time is needed but okay. more importantly mm. that report needs to come public right so that we can scrutinize it and see how that can also inform okay so that at the end of the day this is going to be a bill that we can all be proud of which would serve the purpose okay for which it has been brought others have argued that perhaps the president should have waited because in his state of the nation's address mm. He uh, gave the first assignment to the political parties right. and indicated that he would not hesitate mm. to propose a bill mm. should they fail. You, you delayed. The point is that they have not failed. You delayed. We have not. He gave you a week. We have not. It's not about it. It's not about it. It's not about it. It's about Dr. Tips. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Clementa Park. Dr. Clementa Park. Thank you very much. Dr. Clementa Park is the member of parliament for the Bosa South constituency. He has been my guest on behalf of the NDC. And uh, Elvis Bota is a deputy national communications director, organizer of everybody of the uh, MPP. He hopes to be a member of parliament for the Nadio uh, Kalio. Uh, anyway, gentlemen, thank you very much.